That's what you were after all along, I said. Trading Daedalus' soul for your sister's. Nico walked for another fifty yards before answering. It hasn't been easy, you know. Having only the dead for company, knowing that I'll never be accepted by the living, only the dead respect me, and they only do that out of fear. You could be accepted, I said. You could have friends at camp. He stared at me. Do you really believe that, Percy? I didn't answer. The truth was, I didn't know. Nico had always been a little different, but since Bianca's death, he'd almost gotten scary. He had his father's eyes, that intense, maniac fire that made you suspect he was either a genius or a madman. And the way he banished Minos and called himself the King of Ghosts, it was kind of impressive, but it made me uncomfortable too. Before I could figure out what to tell him, I ran into Rachel, who had stopped in front of me. We'd come to a crossroads. The tunnel continued straight ahead, but a side tunnel teed off to the right, a circular shaft carved from black volcanic rock. What is it? I asked. Rachel stared down the dark tunnel. In the dim flashlight beam, her face looked like one of Nico's specters. Is this the way? Annabeth asked. No, Rachel said nervously. Not at all. Why are we stopping then? I asked. Listen, Nico said. I heard the wind coming down the tunnel, as if the exit were close, and I smelled something vaguely familiar, something that brought back bad memories. Eucalyptus trees, I said. Like in California. Last winter when we faced Luke in the Titan Atlas on top of Mount Tempalis, the air had smelled just like that. There's something evil down there, Rachel said. Something very powerful. In the smell of death, Nico added, which made me feel a whole lot better. Annabeth and I exchanged glances. Luke's entrance, she guessed. The one to Mount Orthias, the Titan's palace. I have to check it out, I said. Percy, no! Luke could be right there, I said. Or, or Kronos. I have to find out what's going on. Annabeth hesitated. Okay, then we'll all go. No, I said. It's too dangerous. If they get a hold of Nico, or Rachel for that matter, Kronos could use them. You stay here and guard them. What I didn't say, I was also worried about Annabeth. I didn't trust what she would do if she saw Luke again. He had fooled her and manipulated her too many times before. Percy, don't, Rachel said. Don't go there alone. I'll be quick, I promised. I won't do anything stupid. Annabeth took her Yankees cap out of her pocket. At least take this and be careful. Thanks. I remember the last time Annabeth and I had parted ways when she'd given me a kiss for luck on Mount St. Helens. This time, all I got was the hat. I put the hat on. Here goes nothing. And I sneaked invisibly down the dark stone tunnel. Before I even got to the exit, I heard voices. The growling, barking sounds of sea demons, smiths, the tech kinds. At least we salvaged the blade, one said. The master will reward us. Yes, yes, shrieked a second. Rewards beyond measure. Another voice, one more human, said, Um, yeah, well that's great. Now that you're done with me. No, no half-blood, Telekin said. You must help us make the presentation. It's a great honor. Gee, thanks, the half-blood said, and I realized it was Ethan Nakamura, the guy who'd run away after I saved his sorry life in the arena. I crept towards the end of the tunnel. I had to remind myself I was invisible. They shouldn't be able to see me. A blast of cold air hit me and I, as I emerged. I was standing near the top of Mount Tam. The Pacific Ocean spread out below, gray under a cloudy sky. About 20 feet downhill, two telekines were pa placing something on a big rock. Something long and thin and wrapped in black cloth. Ethan was helping them open it. Careful, fool, one telekine scolded. One touch and a blade will sever your soul from your body. Ethan swallowed nervously. Maybe I help you unwrap it then. I glanced up at the mountain's peak, where a black marble fortress loomed, just like I'd seen in my dreams. It reminded me of, a, of an oversized mausoleum with walls 50 feet high. I had no idea how mortals could miss the fact that it was there, but then again, everything below the summit seemed fuzzy to me, as if there were a thick veil between me and the lower half of the mountain. There was magic going on here, really powerful mist. Above me, the sky swirled into a huge funnel cloud. I couldn't see Atlas, but I could hear him groaning in the distance, still laboring under the weight of the sky just beyond the fortress. There, the said. 
Reverently, he lifted the weapon, and my blood turned to ice.